Welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm Dead Eye, and if you're new here, we cover tips, tricks, and techniques that can help you in the sport of cowboy action shooting. Now, I know it's been a bit since we've done one of these videos. Things have been a little crazy out there. But today we're back covering some simple beginner rifle tips. Now, even if you are very experienced, you might pick up a thing or two on some of these. So let me know down in the comments down below if you did or not. Other than that, let's grab some gear and head down to the range and do some shooting. Today's basic tips are going to help you to decrease your stage times at the rifle portion of your stages without actually having to increase your hand speed. While it is nice to have an upper limit to your rifle speed, basically how fast you can run it, the reality of it is you don't need to shoot 1.5 second rifle runs to have world class stage times. So let's get into it. All right guys, the first tip is a super simple way to decrease your follow-up shot times. And that's to not wrap the thumb. This is what I mean. Wrapping the thumb after each shot is gonna take you a little extra time to take that thumb off, put it back on before you fire the next shot. Instead, put it anywhere else. Personally, I just stick mine in the air. Some people will just lock their thumb to the side of their hand and some people will just actually put it on the side of their gun, also helping to stabilize the gun. Now that way you either have some strong fingers or a really slicked up rifle, <laughs> but any of those options are better than wrapping the thumb. All right guys, tip number two is a super simple way to keep you from searching for your first target. This is what I mean. Let's say our left target over there is our first target we gotta shoot in our scenario. I still see a lot of that happen, where you pick your rifle up and then you swing over to your next target. Ideally you want to pick your rifle up and go straight to your first target. Easy way to do that is to stage in a way that points the way. So we're going to stage this rifle with our barrel pointed to our first target. If my right target is my first target in the scenario, I'm going to stage my rifle this way and point it to that first target. So that no matter where I come from, whether I'm running in from the right or I'm running in from the left, or I'm coming in from even down range. When I roll my rifle up, the barrel is going to point my eyes where I need to go. So there it is, tip number two, stage in a way that points the way. All right guys, so tip number three is going to help us to reduce our sight movement as well as decrease our target to target transition times. How we're going to do that is when we roll our rifle up, I want you to try reaching out further than normal. Now, some of you guys might already reach out pretty far, but what we don't want to do is this. We don't want our hand back here real close to our receiver. As we lever the rifle, we create more of a pivoting action there at the end. Our pivot point's right here in the middle. So we want to move that pivot point all the way out here. So as we lever the rifle, we have less sight movement. Also for me, out here, I can drive that rifle into my shoulder much better, also reducing my sight movement. Now also by having your hand all the way out here, we have less weight in front of our hand. So we can control our transitions more precisely as well as more quickly. So everybody has their own comfort level with this. You're gonna have to play with it. Everybody's uh, built differently, but I want you to try reaching out there further to gain better leverage and control over your rifle barrel as we're operating it. So there you go, tip number three, reach and pull. All right, for this next tip, there's really no right or wrong way to do this. This is just something I want you to think about and maybe even try if you haven't already. And that's going to be how many fingers we put in our lever and how we kind of punch the back of the lever. So with the way short strokes are now, 
it really doesn't matter a whole lot in your speed whether you're running three fingers, two finger, or one finger. It might make a little bit of a difference on how your hand, your lever pivots around your hand or your hand pivots with the lever. Now, if you have a full stroke gun, this will make a big difference. Less fingers will make a big difference for you. But most of us are running the, about the shortest stroke length we can. And you can run three fingers, two fingers, or one finger. Ultimately, the mechanics don't change a whole lot. But I do find that with less fingers and a lever, I have less force to punch the back of the lever. Also, while I'm here talking about punching the back of the lever, I want you to think about running a little more loose. So we're reaching out with this hand, like we talked about last, and we're pulling in, so we're kind of tight with this hand. With this hand, we want to be a little more loose. It's kind of a weird little give and take. But by being a little more loose, instead of strengthening up and tightening up our fingers against our knuckles and such, we're going to soften that blow on the back of the lever. So by loosening your hand up enough to where it doesn't slip out of the lever, obviously, you can punch the back of the lever, your knuckles will have a little bit of over travel. You'll soften that blow and you'll have less sight movement. So it's not just about speed, it's about maintaining that sight picture so that we can increase our speed without getting all jumpy. So like I said guys, there's really no right or wrong with this. It's just a different way of thinking or something to try if you haven't already. Less fingers and run a little more loose. How about that for a tip? All right guys, with tip number five, this is something I kind of struggled with what I wanted to cover. I had a few different things and I didn't really want to make a really long video. It's wanted to be simple to the point for beginners. And I decided to go with this one because this also can help beginners, but I still see a lot of very experienced shooters doing this. And that's running beyond failure of your form. What I mean by that is some people lever and they shoot the rifle like this. Some people lever like this. Some people lever like this. But ultimately with all of those, we're levering in a way that's going to maintain a good sight picture. We're going to have a good pressure on the back of the lever so we're not over punching it. And we're going to have good trigger timing. Now, when you really, really start pushing the pace, I see a lot of people start using the shoulder. It's just a subconscious thing. Whenever you start pushing really hard and your body starts looking for the path of least resistance or using an extra muscle to generate the force that you want to happen. Things go out the window like our sight picture and our trigger timing and things like that for the sacrifice of speed. So what do I mean by running this with the shoulder? Something like this. You see the whole arm pivoting like a piston. That's not a good technique to employ. Ideally we want to keep it between our elbow, our wrist, and our fingers. Now everybody's different, we're different stock links, different arm links, and uh, all our biomechanics. But ideally you want to keep it between those three points when you lever your rifle. If you start using your shoulder, your muscle here starts tightening up and loosening, balling and relaxing. That's going to pivot your rifle more. Also like we talked about in the last tip, where people's fingers get real stiff, that's usually what happens. You stiffen up when you start using your whole arm and now your trigger time can get off. I see more people jack rounds by doing this. As well, of course, you know, sight going everywhere and all kinds of problems you might have. You're going to hit you with your rifle and such. But this next, like I said, this tip is more of a don't do. You know, don't run beyond that red line. You know, you can run up to that red line and try holding it. That's what's going to build your speed. Do that continually over and over again as fast as you can, maintaining good form. It's like weightlifting. You know, some techniques, people are weightlifting till failure. But failure is not when you drop the weight on your throat. It's when you lose your good form. When you lose the good form, you can cause injury. It's the same thing with our shooting. As you try to push faster, you might shoot faster in some instances doing that. But you're completely throwing your form out the window and sacrifice for your speed. And that's not going to be good for the long run of your game. So, I guess tip number five, <laughs> break that back down into not running with your shoulder. Keep it between your elbow, your wrist, and your fingers. There you go, guys. Five tips that I think can help you with the rifle portion of your stage without actually having to increase your rifle speed. Like we said in the beginning, you don't have to be shooting 1.5 second rifle times, be shooting world class times. But having that upper limit does help, so we're gonna cover those later on how to really build that speed and get that speed. But for now, these things are gonna help you with the efficiency of your shooting, decrease your stage times without having cyborg-like hand speed. So let me know what you guys think. Did you like the tips? If so, hit the like. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike. 
And I know we haven't been making these videos very consistently. Things have been a little crazy lately. So if you want to make sure that you're notified when we make these videos, you can subscribe, hit that little bell next to it if you haven't done so already. If you have, thanks a ton. I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate your support. And hopefully we can keep making some good videos for you guys to help you with your stages. Other than that, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next video, or better yet, on the range. We'll see you then. I'm going to do one last run here. Oh, uh, let's go. Good way to end the day. Thanks for watching, guys.